so I had to fix another coolant leak on my Jetta. And here are all the coolant parts that I've replaced so far. And they're all set up just like they are in the car. And I can explain to you almost every coolant leak that you're going to have with a VR6. So the first thing I had to do was my water pump. And if you're leaking coolant over on the left side of your engine, underneath all of these belts and pulleys, that's going to be your water pump down there. And what happens is this gasket goes bad and you'll probably have some old broken fins on it. And the second thing I had to fix was the heater core. And that's going to be inside the dash of the car. So the symptoms for a bad heater core are going to be the passenger floor might get a little wet. You'll probably smell coolant blowing through the vents. And eventually it'll get so bad that it'll steam through the vents and fog up your windows. And you can see where the old heater core was leaking around the edges. And that's a common problem with these cars. And the next problem you're going to have is the coolant flange and the coolant tube. And this is how it goes in the engine. It sits right here. The coolant tube goes this way, really hard to access. The coolant flange is right here, connected to all these hoses. So the problem with the coolant tube is the ends of it just crumble away. So you can't just put a new o-ring on because the end is gone. Same thing down here. I upgraded that to an aluminum coolant tube and I've replaced the coolant flange with another plastic one. Here you can see where it's the same thing. It has a gasket that goes around and then once that plastic breaks away, you can't put a new gasket in it. I've replaced the thermostat, which goes in that part of the coolant flange. So if you have to replace either one of these, you should do them both at the same time. And when you change your coolant flange, put a new thermostat, put a new coolant plug, and a new temperature sensor so you don't have to do it again like I am. So I haven't had to replace any coolant hoses. Everything's been the plastic failures and the heater core. This is a plastic and a gasket failure. So it might seem like my car has a lot of problems because you see this pile of cooling system parts, but I don't even really get upset about it because this stuff lasted 20 years and there's no way these newer cars are going to last 20 years. So I'd rather fix all of this stuff on an old VW. So here's a good a look VW. at the coolant plug and it looks like it's leaking from the center, not around the outer O-ring. This should be a quick, easy repair. You're probably not going to have this problem where you just have to change this plug, but you might if it's leaking right there at that one spot. It's something I should have did when I changed the coolant flange, but I tried to cheap out and put the old plug back in because you think, how could a plastic plug go bad? But I'll show you once I get it out. So out of all these parts, everyone thinks changing the heater core is the tough job because you have to take the steering wheel off and pull the dash out of the car. But I think changing the water pump is probably the tough job because you have to lift the engine up so high that you pretty much just stuff your downpipes into the firewall so you can get the water pump out past the frame rail. You have to unbolt the engine mounts. Or maybe the coolant pipes is another tough one because you have to pull the front of the car off. But so we have the battery out, we have the coolant out. Now let's get this hose out of the way and see what we gain. So this is electrical wires here. And even when you take it out of the little holder bracket, you're not going to be able to go past your coolant flange bracket. But you can move it over a little bit and gain a little bit more room. So now I'm gonna try to get a screwdriver above that clip, lift up, and pull the plug out. So this is how you know I'm a professional mechanic. I just pulled that clip out, and I was able to catch it in the bucket of coolant, like a pro. There we go. You can see this part of the plug is all crumbled away. I knew that when I changed the coolant flange. So I think what happens is these holes go really deep and it's probably poking through here, so I'm going to get a little screwdriver. I bet we're about to poke this right through here. Yep. So the end of this plug had crumbled so bad that the coolant was pushing its way through here. You can just chip it out of the way with your nail. Look at this, just taking chunks right off of it. And then over here, it, it's not that bad. So it actually was leaking through the center of this plug because it was broken away, so it wasn't the O-ring at all. It's still a good O-ring. So we'll put the new plug in with the new clip. So I have the new clip in, 
but it just feels really flimsy and junk compared to this old clip. So we're going to try to take the new clip out and actually put the old clip back in. So I spent 15, 20 minutes trying to get this new clip in and then two minutes putting that old clip back in because it's a sturdier plastic. So, so I have the new coolant plug in. I've got the hoses reconnected. We're going to put the battery in, refill the coolant, and we should be good to go. So I started the car and there's no coolant leak, so we're all set to put the front bumper back on. And that takes care of another VW problem where that little plug wears away and eventually starts leaking through the middle.